So, dear applicants and those who are interested with the team university, welcome to the uh, today open door event through the Zoom. Uh, we're glad to see you and to hear you. And we hope today meeting will be useful for you as well. So today we will, uh, it is not only me, so colleagues of mine uh, we all, will also uh, uh, talk with you. So let me introduce one by one. So today, uh, Andres Seletti, our uh, academic uh, lecturer, who will teach uh, for the students who will be admitted to Team University starting from the September. He, he is with us today. Uh, also, Nodorbek uh, Odorjonov. He is our uh, enterprise and industry relation officer. So he will also answer uh, to some of your questions. Fulka uh, Pulatova, she is our uh, policy officer. She also with us and she will help us uh, holding today uh, presentation as well. And we are waiting uh, our Kamil Maksud Khanova. Uh, she right now joining us and uh, she will also answer some of your questions. So today uh, session uh, we will help in English, okay? But you can address your question in uh, Uzbek and Russian as well, okay? So uh, we can switch between the languages. So the rules is uh, you could send us the question through the chat or uh, what we prefer is uh, you could address your question uh, through the audio, through the voice, okay? So I will moderate it. So I will let uh, those who ask uh, the questions, okay? So we uh, held several of these kind of uh, events before, and I hope this will be quite interesting and engaging. So we hope you will also uh, express some of your thoughts, not only the questions, and we will be uh, glad to enjoy the next one and a half hour uh, talking with you. Okay, so uh, let us start. Uh, I, I, I'm planning to give a floor to the Andre, but if you have a question, you can address it now. Okay. Uh, okay, Halima Kalanova saying, Assalamu alaikum, Mr. Rector faculty members of so Dert University. Wa alaikum assalam Halima. Uh, glad to see you and to hear you. Uh, so if you have a questions, uh, you should raise your hands. How to do it? There is a, a button. Where is this button? This button is a reaction, I think, if I'm not mistaken. In the reaction, you have a, a, this sign. You could see it. So if you press it, I can see it and you could go with the question. Okay. Uh, so let us start. Any questions? No questions. Okay, Let, let's uh, warm up. First of all, uh, Andre, I am passing the floor to you. So please start. Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. My name is Andre. It's nice to see you here online. Uh, thanks for, for joining our, our conversation. If I speak too fast or you want me to slow down, you can also put the other reaction up. Maybe clap and say, slow down, please. Um, I'm academic staff. I will be teaching uh, the Global Issues course. So basically what we will do is we're going to look at all these global things that affect your life and that affect Uzbekistan. And these are things that are important for us to be aware of, not only as citizens, but also as future uh, employees, businessmen, entrepreneurs. Uh, if we just take the example of COVID-19, something so simple as a global health issue can change our lives completely upside down. There's some other important issues like the environment, uh, technology, um, poverty, inequality, all these things affect us and they also affect how we do business. And I think some of the most interesting entrepreneurial ideas that you see in our world today, um, they're actually addressing these, these issues. 
so from energy, uh, I mean, we all know Tesla. Yeah, we all know Elon Musk and, and what he does in terms of, of changing how energy is used for cars. Um, so this, this is just an example, and, and we'll look at many other examples um, of how entrepreneurs are making a difference and how they're dealing with these, these global issues through creativity and also adding value and, uh, and an impact on their society. So we'll be thinking about these things, and we'll be thinking more specifically about uh, our country, Uzbekistan, and how you know, we can make a difference and how we can tackle some of these global issues. Um, so at the same time, we'll be working on our critical thinking skills, so how to think better, how to uh, look at information better, how to have a, a really good opinion on things, and also our creativity skills, our problem-solving skills, how to come up with new ideas, uh, uh, how to work in teams to come up with new ideas. So that's, that's kind of what we would like to do. I spoke really fast. If something's unclear and you want more explanations, please ask questions. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm happy to answer and explain in more details. Okay, we have uh, Ulugbek Aziza who raised the hand. Ulugbek, you can unmute your microphone and ask your question, please. Okay, thank you. Assalamu alaikum. How do you do? Yes, welcome. Good Good evening. Evening. Can you hear me? Question? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. And I have a question about scholarship. And you said that in the first year, the university um, provides for all students scholarship, yes? Yeah? Celebration scholarship. Yes, right, you are. And uh, also in the seminar in the 13th of June, uh, you said that we should, we should uh, make a video to receive a scholarship. Okay. And there is, I have a question. Uh, what for we need to make a video if the scholarship is for everybody or it's only for, uh, for students who will do a video? Okay. Uh, let me answer this question, Ulbek. Uh, so those, so now you start to apply, okay, through the uh, registration form on our website. So those mm -hmm. who completed and put all the documents on the place, they are currently passing the checking. Those who will be like uh, uh, meets all the criteria, they will get the message unconditional offer, which means you university is ready to accept you as a student. Then you will get, uh, after some time, probably uh, just in a few hours, you will get the email uh, about the scholarship conditions, okay? Only students who admitted to university can apply for this celebration scholarship. And in these emails, you will have a link and as well as uh, uh, there will be instructions, okay? So some of the students, uh, okay, we need to mute someone. Uh, so it will be the conditions to um, how to how to do it. So it's about the video requirements. How long should it be? Okay. The topic is uh, why team university. Some yeah, of the students they could record, upload uh, the video, and then uh, uh, send upload, uh, put the link in this form, scholarship form. Uh, some of the students, they could prefer uh, to, to make it in a written form. So write in a uh, uh, Microsoft Word, let's say, and then upload the file, okay? So it's uh, up to you what kind of format you're selecting in order to apply for the scholarship, okay? So look back, you will find all the instruction in this uh, email or uh, uh, the link where you will apply. So you can go and uh, upload over there, okay? So do not rush okay. with the uh, scholarship. You will have a chance to do it, but uh, before you need to be admitted to the team university. Okay, okay thank you. Did I answer I your question? Yes, yes, I understood it. Ulubek, I can't hear you. Thank you, I understood you. Okay, good, good. Okay, thank you, thank you. Any other questions? Okay, any other questions from the other participants? Please raise your hand. Uh, let me check the chat. Uh, we have uh, some messages over here. Let me go through it. 
Uh, so, no. if a quarantine will not stop, the Russian back is writing us. Will our strategy online? Uh, probably or online. The webinar The tutor changes or not? Okay. So, uh, Andre, I think it's better for you to explain uh, for our future students what will happen with the online and offline education. Okay. Um, so basically, even though the education, uh, if, if we do things online, you still have the same lecture. Um, the lecture will organize the learning activities in a slightly different way. Um, so if we can't meet face-to-face, -face, uh, instead of, let's say, having a, a discussion face-to-face, -face, uh, the online lecture will organize a forum discussion, uh, perhaps a meeting like this for 15 minutes. Um, but it'll always be something dynamic. So maybe short videos to watch, something for you to do, something to send and get some feedback. Then you're, you're going to get input from your lecture. You'll get input from your peers. So doing education online, it's very important that we understand you do it differently than in a classroom. It's not worse and it's not necessarily better. It's just different. Actually doing education online has a lot of potential. Um, so you have a lot of potential. You know, sometimes if you go to a classroom and you just sit and you just listen to a professor, it can be very passive. When we do education online, you have a lot of freedom to do a lot of things uh, because you can watch videos, you can read an article, you can read a blog, you can comment on someone's post, you can comment on what a colleague said. So what happens is uh, online education is just a different way of doing something. It's organized by your lecture. You know, I'll be there, I'll be giving you feedback. But to, you'll be able to interact not only with your colleagues online, which you already do, you know, when you're on Facebook or Instagram, it's the same idea. We're going to keep interacting just online and you'll be able to use a lot of different things. So in a way, it's much more dynamic than just being in class with me. Okay. But in any case, I'll still be there. And so will the other lectures. All right. They'll be guiding you through this process. Does that make sense? I speak very fast. Slow no, me down no, if I do. I think. Uh, thank you. I hope you answer the question of uh, Rafshan Beck. Uh, okay, there is another question as well. So uh, there is a question from uh, Fusan Hon. Hi, due to the COVID-19, many students couldn't take the IELTS exam. It would be much better if the university created its own uh, entrance exam, which students can take instead of a Duolingo. Uh, Fusan Hon, uh, yes. Uh, there is a uh, kind of a challenge, which is a challenge for the university as well. Uh, we see this challenge and the limitations of uh, arranging the exam also uh, comes to the university. We also can't arrange it because it requires a lot of infrastructure. It requires uh, a lot of preparation. So that's why our uh, decision, based on the limitation we're facing now, uh, was to accept the students without any exams. Uh, lots of providers who can exam on the level of English, including the IELTS, uh, including the others as well, is available on the market. So that's why uh, we say to our potential students, go ahead with any possibilities. Probably from the next year, if the university will build up necessary capacity to arrange this exam, we will do it. But now how we can support it? Uh, we are doing the negotiation, uh, let's say, with the IDP, who is uh, one of the provider of IELTS exam. And what they are saying us, they could uh, arrange separate IELTS exam for those who wants to apply to the team university. Okay, and this news was published on our social networks. So uh, I hope they provide the full support for those who are applying. So you are going to the resource of uh, IDP and they will help you with the registering to the IELTS exam. And these exams currently, as I know, planned after the 6th of uh, August. Uh, but we are not, uh, we are like uh, warning you that there is uh, still a risk of a, uh, uh, social isolation and uh, restrictions. So that's why these exams, even they can be postponed for the later period. So that's why we're providing another alternative, which is a Duolingo, okay? 
So where you can do everything online. So this is uh, something you could do. And what we see more and more students now researching about the Duolingo, they applying and some of the students, they're already sending us their uh, results of their exams in the Duolingo. So that's why uh, what uh, I would say to our potential students, do not just sit and wait for the IELTS exam, go with the other alternative as well. Uh, why? Because the timeline, unfortunately, is uh, uh, squeezed. Uh, we can admit only until the 31st of the August. So there is uh, still uh, one and a half months, but uh, uh, you need to do it to start it now. So plan accurately, understand the risks which is exists. So, and uh, do not just stuck on the IELTS uh, exam, go for the other alternative as well. Uh, also interesting question from the Firuz Akbarov. Uh, the question quite a long, uh, let me read it. An interesting question to the staff of team university in Tashkent. If you look at the history of a football club Torino, it is uh, interesting to notice the fact that they were founded by a group of a former football club uh, Juventus players. However, till now, Ju Juventus remain as the global brand as compared to that of a Torino, which seems almost non-existent in the world football. My question is following. What about, uh, from what I noticed, most of the staff of a newly established team university in Tashkent are exactly the former representative of Westminster University in Tashkent, including Alan Peter Franz. What does it say? What makes the former employees of Westminster University in Tashkent get reunited at the team university in Tashkent? Thank you for your answer in advance. Sincerely, Firuz Akbar. Firuz, thank you for this question. Uh, actually, I'm receiving this question uh, quite a lot uh, the last months. And uh, let me explain. So first of all, the team university is uh, not copy paste of a Westminster. It is an absolutely different new university. The second of all, we are not run from the Westminster. Westminster is a well-established, well-known, very interesting uh, and very experienced university with a well-established infrastructure and a team, which is uh, developing in its own path. So that's why we developing the team not to compete or not to uh, do something, let's say, against the Westminster. Please understand, in Uzbekistan, uh, uh, in education, there is a big deficit. It is not only a deficit in the number of uh, seats, it is about the nature of a university existing in Uzbekistan. There is no entrepreneurial university who will be quite, quite close to the practical implementation of a theoretical knowledges. So that is why what we decided is let's make something different. And in order to explain, I'm very often saying, it's like uh, you are walking on the street and you see a beautiful building. Let's say it is a Westminster International University in Tashkent. Quite a beautiful. You're going inside and you really enjoy. It's a quite a different. But when you walk out and you go to some other streets, you could find a different building. So the team university, we, we want to build something different. We do not want to build the similar, the second Westminster, no. And the question that majority of the staff from a junior university, um, currently we're employing 35, 35 employees, okay? And if we count those who came from Westminster, they are less than 10, okay? So, and if we are counting, so uh, the majority is coming from the different areas. Specifically, let's say those who we are hiring currently as academic staff, the majority is not from Westminster. So that's why we are not like uh, wants to copy paste or we want to build something uh, against. We want to build a different thing. And when the people comes to us, what we first, talking about is uh, their vision of a university, how they want to see it. Why? Because the people who comes to the university, they come with their ideas, with their dreams, with their some uh, willingness to make the difference in this world. So what the team university is doing, 
we creating this possibility first of all for the those who are living in Uzbekistan and of course we want to expand it not to Uzbekistan but uh, at least to the Central Asia as well so that's why this will not be like a competition like you mentioned a case between the two football clubs it's a absolutely different uh, story it is not about the competition it is about the bringing the different education different experience different vision to the market of uzbekistan and give them more possibilities for potential students as well as for the employers because they comes to us and say we want a different students okay so they, that's about uh, they, that's what we are talking about during uh, our not only external uh, interviews but also when we internally see it and discuss what will be the team university tomorrow the day after tomorrow and so on so that's why uh thank you for the question firuz i hope i managed to answer your question uh and in case if it is not so uh i'm uh ready to answer uh the next questions as well okay we have more uh questions in the chat but before it i see that olim john is raising his hand and I want to give him a chance to ask, to ask the question. Olim John, you can unmute your microphone and ask the question. Olim John. Okay, probably Olim John can hear us. Also Anwar Rustampul raising the hand. Okay, Anwar, go ahead with your question. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, yeah, my name is Amir, and um, I logged in from my father's account. It was oh, okay. <laughs> so yeah, um, I just finished year 11 of the British School of Tashkent, and I still don't have my results because they're going to arrive in August. Is there any way I can somehow apply or make notes of myself in the university so I can be like in the system already? Okay. Uh, so actually, uh the academic uh administration office in your school probably can give uh, some kind of a spravka okay if they cannot give you the transcript okay mm -hmm. they can give you some kind of a document with this document you could go for the uh applying in case you do not have any document so you could uh anyway go for the ap application okay and you could provide any support documents. Probably you have uh, some records of your previous year, year study. Okay, so just upload whatever documents you have. This will indicate your uh, interest towards uh, mm -hmm. being a part of a university. And as far as the uh, process of admission is going ahead, and probably the registrar office, the admission office will go into contact with you so they will negotiate with you personally what kind of uh, other documents you could support with or if it is not possible they will negotiate with you about the timeline until what you can download those documents which is uh, uh, crucial which is important for you to be admitted okay so i don't think it is a big issue now so you can go ahead with the admission uh, with the uh, admission form so go ahead, uh, upload whatever you can uh, provide, maybe some supporting document. And I think this will be quite enough for the first step. So I can send you my mock exams, right? Yes, yes, you can do it. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay, uh, any other questions? Olim John, the, your hand is still uh, raised. So would you like to answer the, okay. You sorry, are... sorry, I pressed it accidentally. Okay, okay, okay. Do you have a question? Yeah, I have a question. Uh, why to turn fee is much expensive? Okay, so the, when we setting up the fee of the university, we comes out, out of the model of a university. Let's say when it is a state university, uh, there is a supporting money comes from the budget from the government, okay? This is a completely private university and only the founders who provide the money in order 
for the university to operate. And in order for the university to start covering its costs, it uh, needs to rise uh, until the size of, uh, let's say, two, three thousand students. Okay? So, and it takes about two, three years at least. So until that time, the founders will give the money to the university to support its operation. Okay, so that's why uh, the setting up the price, first of all, related with the, its uh, financial model in order for the university to be self-sustainable and to have enough resources to create good facilities, to attract good lecturers, academics, professionals, experts, uh, and to create this necessary student experience and student environment for you to study on the appropriate level, okay? So what we want to provide to our students is the best uh, uh, possible student's experience. So that's why when we calculate all these possible costs, uh, we go through the different analysis. So uh, someone needs to mute their mic because we can hear other voices as well. Okay, thank you. So, and uh, that's why we calculate uh, different models. Of course, we comes from the perspective that uh, there is a, some certain kind of a psychological price on the market as well, but we also look to the future and we see that inflation rate, that every year the sum is depreciating, uh, it's inflating. So we make a lot of different analysis and we come out that the university, in order to be stable financially, in order to provide a good experience, in order to develop uh, enough resources for university to build up and further to develop other programs as well, not only the undergraduate, but also later postgraduate. And maybe we'll open also the pre-university as well for the students to prepare uh, to be admitted to the university. The university needs the resources. So this, uh, this price comes out of the many, many, many criteria. Okay? So it is uh, not just we take the price and set and say, let's it be 59 million, that's it. No, it is a lot of analysis. We make the marketing analysis, we make financial analysis and so on and so on, make a predictions. And based on it, we set this price. Okay? Olam John, did okay, I answer same. your Thank you for answer. Okay, thank you. Uh, any other questions? Okay, so far no raised hands. Uh, let me go to the chat again then. Uh, Davron uh, Ozodov sent us uh, the question. I have already entered two universities and they gave me a contract, but I want to study in a team university. I have one problem is that the team university answers will come out and the end to the August. And I have IL6 and also my school marks are good. I wait for the team university exam results, but I don't pass. Okay, I will lose one year. Can we know the answer fast? What do you advise for me? Do I have chance to enter team university? Okay. Davron, thank you for the question, first of all. Uh, so the question uh, saying uh, the, the results will be published by the end of August, no. As I said, if you apply already, what we expecting by the end of the next week, our admission group will uh, end uh, checking all those who already apply and probably after the 27th of June, uh, July, so this means the Monday after the next week, we will publish, start to send the emails to those who already pass the requirements, okay? So you will, if you already apply, you upload all your documents, you have IELTS on your hand with a six, your school marks is a good, then most probably if you already apply, you will get this email. So, and you will get this email by the, 27, 28 of uh, July. So then you can already go for the immediate scholarship. So in uh, two days, you will get the result of a scholarship. Then you will get the contract. So I hope by the 1st of the August, you will already have a contract on your hand. So it is not about the end of August. It is the end of uh, July. So you will have a chance to choose out of the uh, three universities. And if the team universities is your priority number one, 
then you have a time to think, to decide, and go ahead with the contract uh, payment. Okay, so that's why okay, uh, don't rush. The time you have now is enough, so you will have a time to get the contract and to make a final decision and to go ahead. Okay, I hope yeah, I am answer your question. Uh, okay, the I answered you already. Where the team university located? Uh, Manisha Ashurova asking us. Maybe Camille or Nadorbek will answer it? Okay, so Camille has- uh, I can answer it, I'll share it, yeah. Let's Nadorbek uh, answer it. Uh, so first of all, can you hear me good, colleagues? I can hear you, go ahead. Uh, okay, our university is located uh, on the Timur Malik Street 146. So the, uh, it is about the near uh, Arzinka Aviator. Uh, but uh, if you still need you, the address, uh, you can uh, go to our website or our social media platforms. There you can find our exact uh, address. Okay, so uh, if you uh, didn't hear properly Noderbeck, he said that the team university located near the Karzinka Aviator or close to the Lukoil uh, gas oil station, okay? Uh, there is a new uh, bridge was constructed recently, okay? So it's uh, nearby uh, and we will locate it in this building for the first year. The second year and follow up, we currently looking for the other locations as well. So probably we will move to the uh, some different locations from the next academic year. We'll have uh, several options. So we will look for the best one and we will definitely uh, choose which one best fits for the team uh, university. Uh, Halima Kalanova uh, sent us the message. I invited some colleagues from other foreign universities and branches in Uzbekistan. Uh, for whom team can be competitor, unfortunately are not here. Okay, thank you Halima for joining the other universities as well. Uh, uh, we are not talking about the competition. So we are not see any university in Uzbekistan as a competitor. We are collaborating. So I'm as a rector of a team university, uh, working with the other rectors as well. And we constantly discussing about the uh, issues in uh, with the higher education in Uzbekistan and our aim is not to compete at all. We are not competitors. I'm repeating it again and again. We want to collaborate and bring better experience, better practices, better expertise to the higher education of Uzbekistan. And we want that the higher education in Uzbekistan, including all the universities, doesn't matter whether in Tashkent or in Termes, or in Andijan, or where they are located, brings the best possible quality education for all students in Uzbekistan. So that's why we are not see ourselves as an exclusive elite university, separate, staying separate. No, we are part of a, all universities in Uzbekistan. We will collaborate with them. We will work with them. Our students will do the competitions or join projects with the other students from other universities. So we will create as much as possible joint projects, not only students, but also our academic staff. So that's why what is our aim? Is our aim is to make the higher uh, education in Uzbekistan better, more higher quality. So the students who studying in Uzbekistan get the best possible uh, students experience and uh, after the graduation of university, they have a possibility to get the best possible job. Okay. Uh, thank you, Kosom uh, Khan. I think team university is the best option because it is a practice, but how can we practice online? Okay, Andre, this is again to you. Again, it, it depends on lo a lot on what we mean by, by practice. Um, so if, if it's, it has to do with in-class activities or if it has to do with an internship or if it has to do with a job placement. In any case, I mean, I think you might have noticed with COVID, a lot of work, a lot of things are moving to online. 
or to a digital sphere. So I think our world is changing. Uh, and so a lot of the practice, a lot of the things we do, uh, we can do from home, we can do online, but you'll still have someone mentoring you, someone guiding you, someone helping you uh, see what you're doing right, what you're doing wrong. So I don't think uh, practice has uh, gone away. It's just changing the way we do things. So, I mean, for example, we would have had this meeting uh, at the university, everyone together. As you can see, we're having it online. So I think you have to think that uh, practice will still be there. Uh, it's just going to be slightly different for the time being uh, until this uh, COVID-19 um, is around. But it doesn't mean practice goes away. It just means practice becomes more and more digital. Um, I hope that answers your question. From my uh, end, I can also add, uh, if yeah. you don't mind, Andrea. Yeah, please. Uh, so my name is Camilla. I am a marketing uh, manager at Team University, and I can say from my own experience. Uh, can you hear me well? Yes, yes, Camilla. Go uh, ahead. <laughs> so I can say from my own experience that right now all my marketing team is working from home, and also we have an uh, intern. Uh, her name is Dono. She is also here, and she is doing practice very well uh, in distance, by distance, online. So every day we have uh, we have a Telegram chat where we organize our working process, and um, every day. So I put some tasks, and all the interns and uh, team members they do the job really good. So, yeah, it's a bit uh, different <laughs> that we used to do before, but still it's uh, possible to learn something new uh, working online, working uh, by Zoom, by Telegram. So every day uh, in our own team group, we have uh, Zoom meetings in the beginning of the day and in the end of the day where we write a meeting minutes, agenda, discuss all the things necessary to do so I think that won't be a problem and for our partner companies uh, who are looking for interns for practice it's a good experience too because the young people they are more uh, friendly with uh, digital innovations and uh, with all this uh, social media telegram zoom skype or whatever so I think it would be even more interesting that we uh, thought about it before <laughs> Am I right, Al Sharika? Yeah. yeah, 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 right you are. Thank you. Yeah, uh -huh. if I could just add add one more thing. Uh, I think this makes us have this makes us have to be more creative on, in our practice. Yes. So having to do things online actually pushes us to be creative, innovative, find new solutions. So it's also very positive in many ways. Okay, so I would just uh, want to make like example. Uh, we discussed uh, with Andre as well how we can make it uh, more interactive while the students sitting, let's say, at their homes. And we're saying we want to make it like more practical. So what we can do in order to make it uh, practical while sitting at home? What kind of a tasks we tasks we can create so the students not only sitting in the near to their laptops or uh, PCs, but go outside. So let's say one of the example, Kosom Khan, we can say uh, one of the example we think about, let's say the students will have to go to the nearby shops and make uh, three interviews with some of uh, the people who working in these shops. It could be a retail-based question. It could be the financial-based question. It could be marketing-based question. So they collecting it. They could record it or they could a statement and then they upload. And then they start to discuss. So the students, they say, oh, I asked this one. They make this one or oh, this kind of a question. So it creates a discussion because the different students, they will face different answers. And we will discuss it and we will put it in some framework okay so it will be quite interactive or you can go and ask the question maybe from your parents who may be currently working or from your neighbors or from some others so that's why we think about not just sitting and watching not just sitting and reading but also go outside and make some kind of activities as well okay so we currently hardly working in order to bring the difference so it is a Absolutely not just to sit and watch. 
this is about do some activities as well. So, and it is up to our imagination, what kind of activities and how creative we could be in building up. And this is a, a quite a very good practice for you because you communicating some people who is currently working and you try to understand how they think, why they answer this way, what kind of issues do they have? And so, so it creates your creativity, it creates your, uh, it develops your critical thinking, it uh, creates the thinking out of the box. So it's a lot of things you can do even with this kind of uh, limitation. So that's why uh, do not think that online is only about sitting and watching the videos, okay? It's uh, absolutely could be amazing experience and we're doing our best in order to be creative in uh, finding this experience for you. Okay, um, uh, the question from the Orion. Uh, hi, could you tell us that transfer after the, a year to UK? Thanks for answering. I really keen to study abroad. Could you tell me more about the transfer after a year to UK or other developed countries? Okay, Orion. Uh, so this is a, a question some students are sending us and we really, uh, if you know, we are bringing the curriculum, uh, which will be validated from the, our international partner, uh, London South Bank University. Okay, so that's why uh, those who complete the foundation degree in a team, they can make a transfer or they can uh, continue their study in LSB or make a transfer to other UK or European universities as well. So that's why, yes, you will have a chance to apply and go ahead with the study, but you need to understand that the tuition fee for the university the next year, let's say, if you apply for some UK university and you transfer there, the tuition fee will be local. Let's say for the UK universities, it is from 11 till 14,000 pounds a year just for the study, plus your living and transportation cost, so which is quite expensive. If you can cover it, uh, the university will provide you support with all necessary you, you will need in order to do it. So we will be happy, okay? So in this term, uh, 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 there is no this kind of communication. So you will have uh, like, a, imagine you are studying in the UK and you, you want to transfer to some other university in UK or Europe. So you will have the same uh, possibilities uh, as uh, any uh, other international students. Uh, okay, next question again from Halima. There is this, uh, at least seven departments in Uzbekistan uh, where one can obtain knowledge on international tourism. This industry sector is combined with the restaurant business. What are premises where team internship would be organized, field exper experience would be uh, acquired, okay, acquired probably. Uh, so, uh, Halima, uh, we uh, as we said, the first year in a team university, it is a foundation, okay? From the next year, we will have a three or four uh, courses. So one of which is a business management, marketing, uh, digital uh, innovation and entrepreneurship, and one of them is a tourism and hospitality. Why tourism and hospitality? Because our government is uh, understand that the, uh, one of the strategic uh, direction of Uzbekistan development is a developing tourism sector. So that's why uh, for sure we will create the necessary infrastructure. But what we think now, because we learn about the experience of a Singapore who initially arranged this study and now it's uh, more university doing it. We actually go into the uh, businesses. We currently negotiating with the Hilton Hotel. We will go to Hyatt Hotel. We will go for the uh, previously the demand uh, and uh, so many other hotels, international hotels. So we will go with them and discuss how our students can come and do some practices in, in uh, your hotel as well. So this will be like a student study and they will have uh, some hours going to the hotel and spend some hours over there. So this we believe will be the best uh, experience for our students. Uh, okay. So there is a question about the scholarship, uh, which was addressed by Jawahir uh, Mahkamov. 
Good afternoon, everybody. I hope you are doing fine in this uh, in these trying times. I would also like to thank you for your efforts to improve higher education in Uzbekistan by adding up to the privatization of a higher education institution. Uh, this is not privatization. This is a developing of a private institution, but thank you very much. My question is as follow. A couple of days ago, when I contacted the team university regarding the capital bank scholarship uh, and couldn't get a full answer on one matter. After getting unconditional offer from a team university, how can we apply for the scholarship provided by Capital Bank? Is Capital Bank's selection process for the recipients for the scholarship separate? Uh, I think the Norderbeck is the best person who can answer it because he is uh, contacting the Capital Bank on this matter currently. Thank you very much for your question, Alishereke. Thank you for passing the words. So the first thing you have to do, as you mentioned uh, earlier, is to apply for the team university and get your unconditional offer. After getting your unconditional offer, uh, you will have to proceed to the website that is exclusively created, especially for uh, scholarships. Uh, now IT department works hard on it and uh, we assume that in the several weeks we, uh, the, this website will be available. So uh, next steps you have to do. Uh, we uh, have a draft procedure, still it is on the development process, but uh, the draft procedure says that uh, first of all you have to uh, provide us with your um, personal uh, characteristics like um, your career interest, your intent to work in the future um, job, uh, like why do you want to uh, work in the capital bank, then you have to write a motivational letter up to 1000 words. Again, criteria for motivational letter will be uploaded in the uh, website for scholarships. After uh, sub submitting your uh, motivational letter, you will have to wait until the uh, the shortlist uh, is created by us and then the shortlist of students will be sent to the capital bank. As soon as they receive it, they will choose particular students in order to invite them to the interviews. After proceeding the interview, you will be award, if they choose you, they will award you with a scholarship and you will have to sign a contract uh, with them like uh, between Capital Bank and you. And after that, you get the scholarship. And uh, as you know, after uh, finishing your full four year studies, you will have to work there for uh, a specific amount of uh, years. So this is a procedure for getting the Capital Bank scholarship. Please uh, follow our uh, media platforms so you can get the latest news about that. Okay, thank you, Noderbeck. Uh, I see there are more questions on the scholarship as well, but we have uh, the question, uh, we have a raised hand. Uh, the name is iPhone, uh, so probably the real name is different, but let us give uh, the floor to this person. Uh, hello. Hi, guys. <clears throat> thank you very much for proactive uh, conversation. I was really fascinated by your team university and my name is Diana. I come from hospitality industry and I used to work for Emirates for enormously years and now I'm in Tashkent for one year. So my question is how to apply for, for the job at your university? And second question is I come from, as I mentioned, from hospitality industry which you associated with the Hilton and some other luxury brands. I used to work for Hilton as well. I've been invited for pre-opening as a training manager. So my question is, how can I apply for my skills, my experience at your designated university? Okay, thank Diana, you. nice to hear you. Thank you very much for the question and thank you for the passion uh, waiting. Uh, okay, Diana, so in our website, uh, we have uh, uh, the section, uh, I believe uh, we have a section on the applying for the candidates who wants to join the team university. Or you can addra address uh, your resume right to the hr at teamuni.uz. 
So just uh, send the message with your resume over there and our HR department will be happy to contact you and discuss uh, further on uh, how, how uh, on the process of uh, uh, applying and uh, selection, okay? So we will be uh, glad uh, to answer all your questions. And I hope if you will pass all the selection processes, we really will be happy to see you as a member of a team in a team university. Also, all right. we have an active page on our LinkedIn account. Okay. Uh, so you can apply by LinkedIn as well. All right. Um, I just want to be sure. I know there is one lady, Kim Irina. Am I right? She's HR. No. Oh, we don't have Kim Irina. Uh, we have... What is uh, yeah. Maybe Kim Victoria. Probably, probably. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Definitely she is a Korean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, did you talk with your already? Okay. All right. So uh, can you tell me what kind of uh, position do you have at the moment? Uh, okay. Uh, we have an academic position, but we right. also have some administrative position as well. Uh, mm -hmm. So in the more details, I think our HR department can provide you with the information because the recruitment process uh, going on quite actively. So that's why I'm currently uh, myself not sure which are of the position still open or not. Uh, I'm sure for the academic one, uh, we're filling the position, but, it, but there is some uh, still available. Plus with the, your background in the hospitality, as I mentioned for the first year, we are looking now for the candidates who can bring the basic skills for our students on the, this, uh, we know the skills for the 21st century. Because uh, starting from the next year, when the students will choose their process, it will be more like a, a subject matter modules already. But for the first year, it is a more foundation. So it's a basic like a skills for the students to be able self-study their academic English, uh, their critical thinking, uh, understanding of the organizational culture and so on. So this kind of a modules, they will be mainly focused at during the first year of a study. And starting from the follow-up years, they will be more, as I, as I mentioned, uh, subject uh, area more focused. So that's why uh, please contact uh, if you are like, uh, wants to join us not only as academic, but maybe as a, uh, a member staff as, as a administrative or support staff. So we, are, we will be more than happy to see you in a team university. <clears throat> All right, thank you very much. And um, yeah, that's very good subject you open up. And <clears throat> at the moment I'm doing lots of freelance job and okay. uh, um, conducting lots of restaurant, uh, hospitality service where I conduct lots of training based on the, on the particular subject, based on particular topics. And yeah, that's very good point of view. Thank you very okay. much for answering. And guys, guys I, I wish you all the best. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you, Diana. Thank you very much. And I wish you also all the best and hope we'll keep in touch. Sure, sure. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, another uh, hand raised, uh, Halima. Uh, Halima, you can unmute your microphone and go ahead with your question. Because I see you write a lot, so probably you make it. Uh, I Maleku. I see you as a little young and ambitious. I am 77, but I was in two European projects. One was the hard full-time MBA studying. And I remember that London and South uh, University was involved, uh, focused on uh, case study writing. And I know you are uh, uh, ready to uh, Malaysian Business School. I know the number one uh, diploma holder, Irina, Ina Zuiva, she lives in Germany, in the city where a Volkswagen producer, I visited her because I am very German oriented. After graduation, I worked for Mercedes, and then I worked as a regional manager for privatization of textile and silk producing industries in Uzbekistan. I was the main person, and all people in Europe know me 
because I work it and I know the marketing, it's no specialist in Milan for that. But the work must be something basic in you know, higher education, in health, and so on. In hospitality, I am very closely involved in cultural things, and I have been in blah, blah, blah activities. But I never seen person mention a pure higher thing who was involved in this activity. I am the person, uh, so to say, volunteer, because you mentioned to your, uh, Singapore. Uh, <coughs> I know that people from Singapore, their idea is experiential tourism. Experiential tourism is a group of people who are in the country, 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 who are from, and every Monday we have um, meetups and Zoom. And I uh, so curious how it happened. There are many people are covered and hired by King University. I am 50 years in higher education. I never met somebody. And I think that seniors must be not forgotten. I um, invite you to widen the list of the score of stakeholders. Uh, not shareholders, stakeholders, it's for me. I live in Tashkent, but I have empty house in very close, uh, 20 kilometers, two mountains in another. And uh, Blasmu, Fokimla, this is the city in Liberada, Bolar Oksichi. Your weakness is your dormitory, your work. I think you should join us with the man to get. Yes, you are young, 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 ناموندند only CV in a carasa, General Motor Beach Larica. Because then the model is all the time. It's not we not in our I know for my Kimo Tilpok side in Lark Sina hospitality, I know Karin Caravan Tarevi, Pivan Kimo Pivot, Pivan Kim Chiriasta, Mr. Piva, Ular. I speak German very well, of course. My <coughs> so frank is. Chunga Kazak says, Emerging Kurs Kaleli, Zok Tuchilar Komeli, Tasharga. You speak many languages. You can provide totally free for your students in Northern lectures. In I can teach. Thank you. The, yeah, development of professional competences. Yes. Okay. Okay. So Halima uh, uh -huh. thank you for the, your offer. Uh, I, I I got the, your idea. So uh, and we are connected with you in uh, LinkedIn as well. So we uh -huh. chat. Uh -huh. So uh, thank you for the idea you are bringing. Yeah. Uh, this is the idea for the follow-up, as I mentioned. Now we are like a more uh, foundation degree oriented and uh -huh. what we're providing is a more like advanced next level to make it practical, to make it access to other students from a region as well, to go outside of the university. And this is a quite uh -huh. interesting ideas. Uh, thank you for bringing it. Uh, you have a, a very impressive uh, uh, resume because I saw it uh, and uh, let us discuss it separately. Uh, mm -hmm. Let us work out because it is uh, not a matter of uh, just a call or, or a discussion. It should be accurately planned and scheduled. And I think we will try to find the possibility in order to uh, create some other alternative, as you mentioned, uh, in the area of uh, tourism and uh, hospitality. Uh, thank you for the advice. And uh, uh, as, as I mentioned, the first year, we're attracting the academic staff who will help our students to de develop a basic like a skills in terms of a, like a, we name it the skills for the 21st century. But mm -hmm. starting from the next academic year, it will be more like a subject area related. So what you're proposing is uh, to make it uh, more uh, localized bringing some international experience, understanding the local context, talk context uh, to build up this uh, a different approach, which is uh, quite uh, good. We also think about it and uh, let us keep in touch 
and we will discuss it with you uh, separately uh, how we can uh, build this or plan this uh, for the future. Dear Professor or dear Director, some ideas are crazy only at first um, look glance. If you write to Ina in Volkswagen voice book, she will come to this and aka Bosnova ya. Okay. I am very local, you know. I am again a human house. Italia experiences rich of Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let us discuss it later. Why? Because here is uh, the majority of the audience is. Email is your passion. Email is your passion. So email is. Rahmat. Okay. You you can contact me through the LinkedIn. Send me the message. I will reply to you with my details. Okay. Uh, I think I think you send it to me and I look it through because now you're talking about the German experience, Italian experience. No, Italian you press it in LinkedIn. It was available yeah. in LinkedIn. So, so that's why let's discuss it as a separate because okay. now we have a lot of students who want to address their question as well. Okay, Hadi uh -huh. Rahmat, Rahmat. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, so we have um, uh, we have another questions, okay, and it is about the uh, scholarship again. Uh, how to apply and what kind of a position? Ah, okay, this is the answer. Uh, so, can I still apply without the IELTS? So, Camila, could you please address this question? Mm, yes, sure. Uh, this year we are not organizing any exams, but as you know, all studies will be in English, so we cannot accept students who don't have certificate, uh, which uh, uh, about proficiency in English at the level B2 at least. That's why we make made only one requirement. It's IELTS uh, at least 5.5. I think it's uh, fair enough. So because we don't have exam, but you have to show us your English test certificate. That's why unfortunately we cannot accept uh, students without any certificate. And yes, we know that it's hard right now to get IELTS results. And that's why we made the research and find out uh, several alternative exams. Um, it could be uh, IELTS online. So IELTS indicator, it's very easy to apply and uh, the results come out very fastly, approximately about three or four days after you pass the exam, you can get a certificate and uh, submit it to our uh, website. Also, you can pass TOEFL online test. It's also very easy to do it online. And uh, there is a Cambridge English test, but right now because of COVID-19, I'm not sure that uh, they will organize offline exam. And the easiest uh, option, which we hardly recommend to you is to pass Duolingo test. And Duolingo is not so expensive. It's about $50, I guess. And you can also pass it online. Uh, when you are passing Duolingo test, you can choose Team University as the place where uh, the certificate will be addressed. And uh, after this, we will uh, receive your results of Duolingo test. And you can also attach Duolingo certificate. Uh, so the minimum uh, minimum score is 19, I guess. Yeah. 19 is the minimum score. It's equal to IELTS 5.5 uh, and general English knowledge B2 level. Uh, so if you uh, really want to study in team university, I think it's not very hard to pass Duolingo test. It's uh, better, it's easier and uh, more convenient than do any online tests right now. Link to Duolingo test we uh, have we, we have it on our website, but after uh, the Zoom meeting, if you will contact us on Instagram, for example, or Facebook, we can send you a link as well. 
Did I answer your question? Uh, I hope you answered this question. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> there is a question from the Sherzot Alimov. Uh, could you say the number of applicants have already registered and what is the indicator to be more competitive? Is just being programmer is a plus for entering the university? Uh, who wants to answer this question? I, I can also answer. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Because I have, I have statistics from yesterday. Today the numbers can be uh, some different. But uh, for now we have more than 1,100 applicants and uh, about uh, 200 we already checked and sent them an email that they uh, will be accepted probably yes because they have IELTS they have all necessary uh, certificates and documents so you have to hurry up <laughs> because number of applicants is rising uh, day to day and um, what was the second part of a question just a second okay so. uh okay it is about the number of applicants and uh, how you will like what indicator to be competitive or uh is just being programmer is a plus for entering the university uh, unfortunately we cannot check right now your programmer skills that's why the uh, the first indicator to be more competitive is uh, your english test results and then your school certificate and of course the, those uh, students who apply first they will be considered first am i right and <laughs> uh so far yes but uh, by the end so let's say uh we planning to draw the first line by the 27th of july so uh, this is as i mentioned the month uh, the next monday after the next week so so yeah it will this week ends up tomorrow we have a next week and then the, the next is the 27th we will start to send the emails for those who uh whom uh, we ready to admit and uh then uh so there really will be some still seats so and uh, what we see the students still applying every day uh lots of application and uh so the still st seats still available uh but by the end when we will draw the final line yeah so it will be like a more uh, competitive so those who have a first of all higher the ielts level they will get the preferences uh and uh, the next uh, criteria what we have is your uh, attestat so we will we'll look at it but if you are a good programmer uh let's say what i'm suggesting you to tell about this one when you will apply for the scholarship so tell us something what you program or what kind of uh, uh, what you can do so you you should indicate what you are talented at so we're really interested in a talented students why because he wants to help you to develop your talent to become not only just a programmer but to, to become the 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 greatest not the programmer but the thinker who can manage a lot of programmers okay who can develop these products like a facebook instagram uh, or uh, Microsoft Office. So we want you to, to bring the difference in this world, starting from Uzbekistan, okay? So that's why show us your talents. We're really looking for the talents and don't hide it. Uh, probably in the first year we cannot uh, manage the system how to, to uh, prize your talents. But from the next year, uh, so definitely the university will set up the system so you, you will be prized for the talents you have uh, or you developed so far. Uh, thank you. So another questions. Uh, I have a question from Zioda. Uh, can I take education credit from the bank, which I want for team contract? And if I take credit after my graduation, can my salary cover that credit? Okay. So look, Zioda, the education credit provides by the uh, state there is a like a, uh, so you can can get the the credit it is a, like a, no not a, like a, something which is a prohibited for the some universities and not for the others so it is available for all students uh, this is the one the second of all uh, normally when you get the credit you starting paid immediately so let's say you get the credit for the four years 
the, uni the bank space for your study, but they will start to charge you uh, right after you get this credit. So you need to pay back in a start, uh, starting from the very beginning. So I don't think you will get to the moment when you will get the salary. Abroad, they, they have a, some period. So you get the credit until you study, you are not paying back. But when you finish your study, you start to pay it from your salary. But in Uzbekistan, unfortunately, the credits, the banks, they cannot provide in this term. So they charge you immediately. How we can help to our students who are getting this credit? Uh, first of all, what we are saying, we want to help them to settle up themselves to become independent. So let's say the career center will help you to make, let's say, to make a right resume. The Andrea will help you de to develop the skills, soft skills, which will increase your price in the market. Okay. So while first year study, you will be like uh, armored with uh, many skills and many knowledges. So with this one, you will be able to be a higher rent on the employment market. So you can get part-time job. And with this part-time job, you will start to pay over your credit while studying, okay? So that's why we will support our students in this term, so, but uh, be uh, careful with the education credit. When you're getting the credit, do not take the short period credit. Let's say some students taking one year or two year credit. It's very expensive. So normally it is about now, I think it's about the 14 or 15% a year percentage. Plus if you take just for one year, this is a quite expensive. Uh, so that's why if you trade with the credit with the bank, ask for the longer period. Actually, according to the law, they can give you up to 10 year credit. But normally the banks don't like to give it. So they want to give you like a short term credit, one year or two year. So you need to get the more longer term, then the payback period will be longer and it will not be that level of a stress for you. Okay, so uh, anyone wants to ask the live question, please raise your hands. Uh, we will be happy uh, to answer your questions and to listen to your comments, stories. Uh, and I'm going through the comments. So, please post the link to Duolingo test. Uh, Halimapa, Duolingo test uh, is, uh, uh, please go to our social networks. Camila, is it available over there? Yes, it is. Okay, so Halimapa, you can find in our social networks the post about the Duolingo and I think you can find the, uh, uh, to go to the resource and learn about how to uh, submit, uh, to, to, to pass the exam through the Duolingo. Uh, any questions? Uh, no raised hands and I'm going again to the chat. Uh, Firuz Akbarov, Mr. Alisher Hasanov, as we all know, China is a world's factory, a massive global manufacturing hub, regardless of the fact it was the epicenter for the COVID-19 uh, lol, the city where I worked. Oh, Firuz, you used to work in, uh, in China already, very nice. Uh, will Team University launch partnership with the leading Chinese university from Beijing, Shanghai, uh, Hangzhou, and other cities? Okay. For a record, I have lived and worked in China since 2012. However, to my surprise, our domestic universities do not really cooperate much with the top-notch Chinese universities. Can you tell us briefly about the would-be collaboration project of a Team University in Tashkent? globally with a foreign institution. Thank you. I think Andrea, you can uh, reflect on this question as well. And maybe I will add at the end. Um, yeah, I think definitely agree that today China has become a major, a major player in higher education. Um, so I think there's a lot we have to learn from them. And I think the university has the vision to partner with international uh, institutions in terms of research and, and other opportunities. Um, so I definitely think this is, this is a direction that everyone is aware of and it's a must. Uh, China and its higher education system can't be ignored. Uh, and so there's definitely a lot we can learn from them and I'm sure we will be pursuing 
all these opportunities. Uh, unless I'm mistaken, yes, Anishad? Yes, yes, yes. But reflect how we can collaborate, let's say, with the European university as well, because there are a lot of programs like Erasmus and others when the university wants to go international collaboration of a student exchange, uh, staff exchange, and so on. Yeah. So again, uh, one a major area of collaboration, as Alisher was mentioning, is, is um, when you do a foreign exchange program. Uh, and one, there's a way where you can go and get a semester abroad, uh, where you do some of the courses abroad and you expand your cultural knowledge, language, uh, cross-cultural experience. Uh, usually you'll be living with a lot of people from uh, different countries. So it'll, it's a very great transcultural experience. Then you have double degrees where you can get a degree from one university and the other university too. So these are some of the uh, normal, let's say, exchange programs uh, that happens through Erasmus uh, and Erasmus Mundus. Um, of course, there's also the, the, the uh, opportunity to cooperate in terms of, of research, research projects, funding. Um, so there's a lot that can be done uh, in terms of the EU and what they offer. Um, so I think the university is going to be pursuing all these opportunities uh, and, and yeah, uh, provide students with also these opportunities for exchange and yeah. I okay. hope I answered the, the question. Uh, yeah, let me add a bit, Firuz. So, uh, yes, we open to all the international collaboration, not only with China, but uh, maybe even with Kazakhstan, Georgia, and other countries nearby. Why? Because all of them have a similar kind of uh, experience with the students uh, as a post-Soviet Union. Uh, plus, we want to bring some uh, different experience from the China, European countries, Singapore possibly, uh, Korea. So the many universities now, they are quite open for international collaboration because let's say the students in uh, Korea or in China, they want to have also contact with uh, students from other countries as well. They don't want only the contact with the uh, Chinese. Uh, so that's why as, uh, as well as in Uzbekistan, the students in Uzbekistan, they want to have exchange or some experience or some projects uh, with uh, other universities, let's say European, American, uh, Australian and so on. So in this term, what is good internationally, all universities wants to go international. So it's not a problem to create these links. Okay, so that's why it's a lot of like uh, constantly flying offer saying, oh, let's join, let's do this project or that project. So the, our university and our students, they will have a range of uh, uh, possibilities. So we will distribute these links so you can go register and go ahead with some international review separately or as a team or as a university. Okay, so we will give you some level of a freedom. So it is not only the university brings and puts you on the table, but it's only the also the students who go hunt and bring something to the university and say, oh, we have a very good contact with some university and they want to collaborate. And this is the project. We need support, this kind of a support from the university. And we will go ahead and say, okay, we can do it or we can't do it. If we can do, we go ahead and we support and we build up the projects, okay? So this is uh, like quite an open communication nowadays. The globalization opens the doors, makes the distance quite short. So that's why we will create this environment and it is uh, us and our students and our external uh, experts who are supporting us to help us build up over this uh, collaboration. So, uh, so we will do it for sure, Firuz. Thank you for the question. Um, let me look. None of you raised the hands. So you are not asked, you don't want to ask the question live. Unfortunately, because I prefer live. Uh, yes, Camila. Camila, uh, we have uh, we have uh, five minutes left. Okay. So, guys, if you have questions, please ask them now, and because uh, maybe we will continue this meeting next week, but uh, for this week only today. So, please ask your questions, and I have sent the link to Duolingo test to common chat. Okay, thank you. Yeah, it was a question about the Duolingo. Thank you very much, uh, Camila, for sending it. Uh, let me go quickly through the couple more questions uh, which was sent. Uh, where is uh, located your university, Sarvinos? Please go to our website. You can find the location over there. Uh, 
as a spec you dash of ask me i have registered as a first applicant i have a serf b2 and red diploma by it i haven't received email about the exception okay uh, as uh, i mentioned so starting from the 27th of uh, july so this is uh, not the next week the week after monday we planning to start sending the emails for those who already applied okay so we're going now through the checking uh, confirmation of the list. So uh, we contact those who maybe who did not upload or not accurately upload some of their uh, information. So we like uh, going through this process and we set for ourselves 27th of uh, July as a date when we'll start to send the emails as a confirmation. So Asbek, please uh, wait for the 27th and for sure you will get the uh, email if so far nobody uh, contacts you. Uh, most probably the all documents are accurately submitted, so you will get uh, the email soon. Okay, Sherzot also asked a question. He asked about the number of applicants, and he's saying the last IELTS indicator test is going to be passed 28th of July, and results are going to be announced hopefully by the 1st of August. As well as you said that currently number of applicants is about 1,100, and you will consider them first. My uh, experience Expecting uh, IELTS result is just six, six and a half, and I was awarded by a gold medal in a school. So, what are my chances to be accepted? First of all, Sherzot, you do not need to wait your IELTS indicator result. Apply now. Yes, and instead of the IELTS result, upload your registration screen, make a screen of your registration for IELTS indicator, and upload it. So we will know that Sherzot Alimov wants to study in a team university and he waiting for his results in the 28th of July or his exam. So we will know and you will be already in the pipeline. Okay. So once you get the result by the first of all, you will upload your IELTS result. So you will be uh, like uh, already in the shortlisted uh, uh, students, okay, applicants. So that's why do not wait, apply now, okay? Submit all the documents, but instead of IELTS, as I mentioned, submit the screen that you are registered for the IELTS indicator and keep with us in touch. If you have some worries, if you have some question, please address, we will contact you and we will answer your question, okay? Uh, okay, I think that's all the questions so far. Aziz Umar asks, will there be budget places like white, for exam, uh, example, more than IELTS seven, seven and a half plus and Mathemax 70 plus plus Aziz. So unfortunately this year we have no any possibility to arrange any exams or selection of students. So what our founders did, they provide equal uh, grants or scholarships to all the students. It, there is no like a budget place. This means a hundred percent grant or hundred percent scholarships for this year. What we trying to support our students is uh, to make a link with the business. Uh, if you see our social networks, we now have the contacts with some companies like a capital bank, uh, gross insurance. So they already agree to provide some uh, grant places, budget places. So, but uh, it will be like a, a link, link with these companies and the selection uh, process will be held by these uh, uh, institutions, organization. We will help them to make a short list of or long list of those who apply for it, pass it to them, and they will do the exam or selection or interview or whatever they select. And then those who selected, uh, they will pay for their budget. So these students, they will not be, uh, they will not, sh they should not be paid for their ex uh, education. So the employer will pay for it. So that's why this, unfortunately, as a university, we provide like a overall grant uh, for the amount 20,650,000 sums for all the students who will apply for scholarship. Okay. Uh, but from the next year, university plans to develop this system and the students who is uh, better in performance, not only, not only academically, but maybe some other performances, extracurricular performances, they will be priced with some additional grants, which could, which could reach up to the 100, as uh, our founder, Zafar Hashimov, uh, mentioned in the, his interview, the, some students, they will be able to get 
uh, the grants up to the 100%, okay? So the university wants to be a very flexible, we want to look after our students, we want to create as much as possible possibilities for them to rise and to show their talents. And we hope uh, those talented students, they will get the place and they will solve their uh, financial limitations toward the uh, payment as a uh, the tuition fee for their education, okay? Uh, I hope I answer all the questions addressed in the chat. Uh, thank you uh, very much, everybody. Uh, we do not have uh, other questions so far. So let me remind you, we will have the similar kind of uh, open door uh, uh, events in a Zoom uh, next week as well. Plus this Zoom was recorded. So I hope our marketing team uh, will upload it to our YouTube channel. So those who uh, join us later or could not join, but wants to see this, they could find from our YouTube, Team University YouTube channel and go uh, sit, watch and listen for the discussion held in this conversation. So thank you very much, those who are with us. Thank you very much, my colleagues. Thank you, uh, Andre. Thank you, Camila. Thank you, Noderbeck. Thank you, Hulkar. And thank you, Abror, for being with us, uh, for helping us uh, holding this session. I hope it was useful. And I hope to see all of you soon. Uh, keep safe and uh, have a good Friday and have a good weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.